In this video, we're going to review the Mach Wheel Asphalt Electric Bike. We're going to unbox, assemble, go over the controls, test ride, and review the e-bike. The Asphalt has a 500 watt rear hub motor with a max speed of 28 miles per hour, thumb throttle, 48 volt, 14.7 amp hour battery with a range of up to 60 miles, front and rear hydraulic disc brakes, torque sensor, adjustable front suspension, 7 speed shifter, 27.5 inch by 2.4 inch tires, headlight, taillight, and weighs 60 pounds. Additional specs can be found in the description section below. This is the box that it came in. It's fairly large. It's about five and a half feet wide by three feet high and maybe a foot deep. This was everything inside the box. I'm gonna take all the foam and zip ties off. Looks like we have an 18 millimeter wrench. There's a flyer for a free gift card. The instruction manual, which I'll go over in a second. A set of wrenches, the pump. Looks like we have a bunch of miscellaneous tools, pedals, a 15 millimeter wrench. And then this is the charger. This is the manual for those who are interested. I'll just flip through it quickly and you can pause it anytime if you want to see in detail. Before starting the install, I just want to note how nice this paint job is. It's very glossy even on the battery and it matches the frame. And it looks like there's a clear coat over this as well. It looks very nice and even the rear LEDs are integrated into the frame. The first step is to install the handlebar. There's a few screws that I need to loosen. Taking the Allen key, I'm gonna loosen this bolt, this bolt, this bolt. There's another bolt right here, and then these four holding this in place. I don't think the order really matters at this point because I just want to get them loose. I'm going to turn this around so that the fork is facing forward. I'm going to turn this around so that this is parallel with the frame and this is perpendicular. This screw right here seems to lock into these grooves in the headset, so it holds the angle in place. There's four bolts right here that I'm gonna take off. 
Now that we have this off, I can put the counter bar in place. You can adjust the angle later. I just want to get this bracket on first. You also want the brake levers facing forward. You can have this cross centered in the middle of the circle. There's this cap right here that you can take off and it looks like you can put your Allen key to adjust the tightness of this headset, but it feels pretty good out of the box. So I'm not going to do any adjustments. I just want to get this lined up and then I'm going to tighten these two bolts again. I'm going to leave these two loose for now because I'm going to tighten them after I sit on the bike. On the display clamps, there's two bolts holding them in place. I'm going to loosen them. I'm going to feed these clamps over the handlebar with the logo facing upwards. And then put these bolts back in. Using your Allen key, you're going to take this bolt and washer off. Next, you're going to take your fender. This is the short side. We're going to put our bolt and washer through it. And then over here, we're going to have the headlight facing forward in the upwards direction. With this assembly, I'm going to have the bolt and washer and fender assembly bolt through the headlight bracket and then tighten this on to the fork. If you could see the fender bracket right here, I have it at the highest position when the bike is upside down. That way there's the most clearance between the tire and the fender. And then using our Allen key, we're gonna tighten this. We'll loosen these. Holding the nut on the other end, we'll feed the bolt washer through this fender attachment and then tighten this into place and do the same thing on the other side of the wrenches that it came with. This is the smallest one. It's a 15 millimeter and this side doesn't quite work. If you use this side, there's enough bite to loosen this. We'll do it on all four sides to get this off. We'll remove this tab from between the brake pads. On the tire itself, we'll loosen these nuts on both ends. And I want to keep the washer on the outside. Hovering above the fork, we're going to slide the disc in between the brake pads. And it helps to loosen the nuts all the way. So I was able to slide it between the brake pads, making sure that both of these are propped down I'm going to tighten them by pushing down on the wheel. If one side's higher than the other, then you're going to notice rubbing on the disc brake. The front brake is also rubbing the disc. So what I'm going to do is loosen these two bolts holding the caliper in place. That way it's free to move. And then I'll hold the front brake and retighten these. And theoretically, it should grab the disc in the middle. And when I release the brake lever, it will be centered. So if I let go of the brake lever, it's not rubbing anymore. You can also inflate both of the tires to 20 PSI. It comes with a pump, but it doesn't have a gauge. So I'm gonna use a different pump later. I noticed that the rear tire is more flat than the front, but I'll adjust it later. They said that sometimes the tire comes off the rim, so you have to go around pushing it to make sure that it's all seated. There's also some rubbing in the rear brake, and I'm going to do the same thing and readjust these. While I'm here, I'm going to install the pedals. So the left side, this one is actually lefty tidy, righty loosey. I'm going to turn this counterclockwise to tighten. You can use your wrench to further tighten it. And then the right side is the opposite. So righty tidy, lefty loosey. While I have the bike upside down, I'm going to adjust the rear derailleur. So what I like to do is go to the lowest gear. 
so that there's no tension in line. If there was not enough tension in line, if I go to the first gear, the next gear, it's gonna have a hard time jumping to the next one. Like right now, it's barely getting there. So what I'm gonna do is turn this counterclockwise until this pretty much lines up. And then I'll go through the next gear and it's able to go to the next one, try the next one, try the next one. And it looks like it's going through all of them. I'll shift back down. And it looks fine. But in the vent where it wants to go to the next one and it's not supposed to, you can relieve tension in the line by turning this clockwise. I would say do a quarter of a turn at a time. If it's trying to jump to the next one but you want to stay on the current one, you would turn this counterclockwise. So just keep playing around with it until you get it. If it's not hitting the lowest cassette or the highest cassette, there's these limit screws that you have to adjust. But right now it seems to be shifting well. The bike rack is not fully secure. So pushing this back, I'm going to use my Allen key to take this bolt out. Once we have it out, we'll take this bolt and washer and feed it through the rack, back through the rear fender, and then screw it back down. There's also a seat. Pull this lever outwards, and then you can pull the seat up and adjust it to your desired height. If it's too loose, you can turn this clockwise to tighten it, or if it's too tight, you turn it counterclockwise, and then you can put this to your desired height. There's also an adjustment screw here that you can loosen if you wanna change the angle of the seat, and you can also move it front and back. As a quick guide, you wanna have the seat high enough so when you're at this downstroke, your knee is slightly bent. You don't want it fully extended because you'll be constantly pushing down. If it's too short, then you'll be wasting energy because you don't get that full range. At this time, you can sit on the bike and you can adjust your desired angle. You can also loosen this handlebar again if you want the handlebar at a different position. I'm gonna tighten it here because it feels more relaxed to me. This is the location for the charging port. You plug your charger in here and then the other end into the outlet. This is the other side where the key goes in. Put the key in and then turn it until this pops open. It doesn't go any further. And then when you're done, push this back down. As you can see here, the charging port is actually on the battery itself. So you can actually take the battery out and charge it without having to lug the bike around. There is a button right here. And if you press the button, it shows you the battery level. There's five lights and only two are lit up, so I assume that each one is 20%. Here's some more information about the battery model. These are the contacts. And that's pretty much it. Let's take a look at the controls. We have the thumb throttle over here. This is the front hydraulic brake lever. Here's the controls. There is a power button, an up button, down button, light button, and a horn button down here. This is the display. Over here we have the seven speed shifter. We also have the rear brake lever. Pushing and holding the power button, we turn the display on. Looking at the display, there's bars for the battery level and each one represents 10%. So we're about 50% full. We have the power level up here. If I go to pedal sys one, you can see that bar going up. We also have the current speed in miles per hour. We have the trip distance in miles. We have the mode, the pedal sys level. By default, it's zero. Our trip time, which is 21 minutes because I was testing it beforehand. Let me go through the different modes right now. If I press up, we can go to different pedal assist levels up to five. 
You can also change it in the settings where there's only three. If you press down, it changes the pedal assist levels back to zero. And then if you press and hold down, it brings you to a pedestrian mode that goes 2.5 miles per hour. If you press the light button, it turns on the headlight and the tail lights. And then this button right here is the horn. If you press and hold the minus and light button, it brings you to this interface with your average speed, the max speed, the trip in miles, and then the odometer in miles. So to get out of this, you press the light button. There is also another settings button. If you press and hold the plus and minus button, it brings you to this menu. The first one is brightness. You can press up and down to change to the different modes. And then to enter, you press the power button. So the brightness, I'm gonna keep it at level two. I press the power button to go back. I'm gonna go down, units, I'm gonna leave it in miles, startup mode. You can do the free mode or safe mode. For the safe mode, you have to pedal before pushing the thumb throttle down, and then you can reset the trip. To get out of this, press the light button. There is another technical settings menu. In the instruction manual, it was said to press the power up and down buttons, but that didn't work for me. I had to Press the up arrow, down arrow, and also the light button. And that brings me to this menu. The first one is speed limit. If I press enter, by default, it's 21. If I press the up arrow, I can go up to, I believe, 61. And I already tested this. The max speed I can get is actually 28. So it goes back to zero. Even though I had 61 miles per hour set in the display, the max speed I actually got was 20, 29 miles per hour. So going back to the menu, if I go to power assist gear, you can have three gears or five gears. Five is default. These are the pedal assist levels. If I go down, the voltage is 48. I'm going to leave it like that. Going down, the wheel diameter is 27.5. I'll leave it as is. The Tackle magnets is six. I'm gonna leave it like that by default. And then the riding modes, you can do the motor only, pedal only, or pedal and motor. I'm gonna leave it to pedal and motor by default. Intensity setting, default is three. The max is five and the lowest is one. I think this is how intense the motor kicks in whenever you use the thumb throttle or pedal assist. I use the thumb throttle while stationary at one and there's a slight delay in the motor kicking in. It felt a little softer, but then I also didn't have any load on it. And on five, it spun right away. So for now, I'm just gonna leave it at three. And then if I feel like the bike's too slow, I'll ramp it up. And then there's also factory reset. So I'm gonna press the light button to get out of this. And to turn it off, you press and hold the power button. I'm going to test the max speed using the thumb throttle only in each gear. Pedal is zero, nothing happens. Pedal is one. Goes to 29 miles per hour. And two through five, it goes the same. So I think the only difference is when I actually pedal, I'll probably notice a difference in the pedal assist levels, but using the thumb throttle for one through five, it's always gonna do 29 miles per hour. This concludes the unboxing, assembly, and controls overview. Please check out the description section for a link to the next video with the test ride and review.